Things are really starting to take shape along West Torch Lake Drive here in Fayswood of Brownwood. The buildings have grown out to the street and each one is taking on a personality all its own. And as you can see, Paddock Square is keeping pace with the grandstands coming out of the ground. All for your enjoyment later on this fall. In this month's episode, we'll talk to designer and graphic artist Dennis Graves. He gives us an up close and personal look at his artwork on our Barnstorm Theater. Put on that hard hat. It's time for the building of Brownwood. standing outside the Barnstorm Theater and last month we told you that there are a lot of creative people that are involved in making these buildings look extra special with the artwork and today we're joined by the guy who's really overseeing the specialty artwork that's done on these buildings transforming the outside of buildings into works of art and that is chief designer, graphic artist, and owner of famous painting, Dennis Graves. How do you do, Gary? Dennis, good to, good see, to see you, you again. again. Yeah. You've done some famous things in the villages. I guess I have. <laughs> I've been painting, flapping like a flounder for 20 years here. <laughs> well, what a flounder it's been. There's been no floundering. <laughs> Fantastic artwork, and, and we love all the stuff you've done. Thank you. What was the first? Do you remember? Yes, it was the first bank of the villages. They called me in to do gold leaf. They were looking for a gold leaf person, and uh, I was able to be found, and uh, it was great. It was my first project, and it's turned into 20 years or more. <laughs> I've lost count. If I remember right, that was gold leaf on the vault itself on the vault. in the bank. Yes, sir. Yeah, we wanted to mark the vault. It looked like an uh, old-time type of vault, so it was hand-gilded and hand-painted, and that started that long relationship of having that type of um, old traditional painting done in the villages. I know you're not going to name every project, but basically if folks walk through the village and see something neat, you did it. But what are some of your favorites just off the top of your head? Well, it started off with a lot of the window lettering downtown in Spanish Springs. I was able to do um, just a lot of specialty hand lettering, particular logos, Augies, and uh, just some of the early construction windows. And then we progressed on to the buses and uh, moved all the way up to one of the large murals was the Savannah Center mural. Love that one. Yeah, and uh, that was a, a large project too. And um, just many, I've, I've truly lost count. I'd have to <laughs> look at the list to remember. There's little points of interest all around the villages that I've been involved in. Yeah, well, it's been a wonderful relationship and we're excited about what's going on here. But before we get to that, when did you become an artist? How far back do we go? Were, were you born with a crayon in your hand? Or? Just about, just about. <laughs> it, it, there, you know, being uh, born in the 50s, we did, TV didn't come on until 4 o'clock in the afternoon, so we were self-entertaining. <laughs> well, and uh, a pencil and a crayon was one of my entertainments. And sure, I just, I also developed this fact that I could do things for presents, gifts, relatives, oh. Christmas, all that. and. Uh, yeah, so I just, it became a gift of mine that I could give to people, and now wow. it's become a lifestyle and a uh, career. Wow, it's, it's almost who you are, not what you did. Yeah, that's correct. Do you remember the early stuff that you drew? Yes, one of the things was the, uh, that got attention that made me realize I made a mark, and it wasn't very good, but it was a portrait of my dad. Huh. And I think that I must have been five or seven years old, something like that. <laughs> you so, remember that? Yes, I do. Yeah, well, uh, the family hung it. I think I was the first uh, artist in a few hundred years. <laughs> they hung that up in the back hall, and uh, I walked around knowing I might be able to do this. So. Wow, that is so cool that you remember that. And was there somebody in the family who inspired you or encouraged yes, you? Yes, it was my uh, Aunt Fran, and she took me to the window upstairs on the second floor one day after I had probably drawn a stump tree with a ball of cotton on the top of it. And, had me look out the window and described how the branches came off the tree. And for some reason, then I was able to see things in a way to have 
that image come out in a pencil, mostly. Wow. So to be able to take your image and pull it out through your hand, through a pencil, is what I learned to do. Yeah, it's, it's what we all wish we could do. So thank you, Aunt Fran. Yes. Well, tell us how it happens. I want to go inside the creative mind a little bit. Somebody in the village just pitches an idea and says, this is kind of what we're thinking, and then you run with it? Or? Exactly. We have a preliminary meeting based on a concept that's developed by the design team. And they asked me to come in and look at the project and uh, put my viewpoint to it based on their comments. I start a rough sketch, and we have several meetings that will evolve to a final blueprint that we then can run to color and, uh, and apply to the building. We start with a scale drawing and um, enlarge it mechanically through projectors and computers <laughs> and uh, imagination. So you're not just going out there with a pencil and a slide rule or a brush. There's a lot of equipment that you there use. There is. Yeah, we use as many tools as we can between images from the internet, projectors, uh, rollers, airless spray guns, airbrushes. We employ it all to get that graphic image on the substrate. Yeah, and you even employ ladders and scaffolding yes, and lifts now. Yes. But I'm looking at the scope of what you're doing. You didn't just get here yesterday, did you? No, sir. It's been a, it's been a long path. It's been uh, 30 years, uh, well, actually 31 years now, of doing large format paintings. Wow. Yeah. When you look at these finished products, like you talked about Savannah Center, what an incredible mural that is. Is there any similarity of the feeling that you get? Does it compare to when they put that first drawing of your dad up on the wall when you were a little kid? Is there some similarity? Well, yes, it's called glory. There's, mm. there's a certain sense of glory and acceptance of something that you've done that came out of your heart and when other people enjoy it too, what, what an incredible thing. I mean, this is, uh, this will be here maybe longer than me. Mm. <laughs> so that's a, that's a, a treat, that's amazing to have something that outlasts you besides your children, this is great. <laughs> well, well, it is really exciting to see what you guys are doing out here and we have a lot more to talk about, about the artwork happening out here at Brownwood. So stay tuned, we'll be right back. And when we return, we'll check in with Dennis and his friends and see what they're doing at the Barnstorm Theater. Speaking of paint, 120 to 150 gallons of paint will be used just to complete the artwork on the east wall of the Barnstorm Theater. Welcome back to the building of Brownwood where we're talking art on the outside of buildings with Dennis Graves, a famous painting. Dennis? Hi, Derry. I want you to tell us a little bit about the individual buildings that you're painting, because each one has a little different theme, don't they? Yes, well, basically the concept is, is this is, uh, for me, they wanted to interpret like an old uh, 1840s uh, Florida cracker town, and so we've come up with old barns and old wooden buildings. Everything would have been made of wood, uh, a little bit of stonework, I suppose, but we stuck with the wood theme. And my concept for this, for the sky, was then to bring in the look of an old postcard. Oh. Or an old, if you look through the old 50s Life magazines, that's a similar sky that was used to project off a car ad, the old Buicks and oh. things like that. So it has that sort of, uh, uh, that old Florida, old postcard type of look. And uh, so I think we've achieved that with that different toning that we have in the sky. It has, and it'll age nicely to get more of that vintage look to it. And of course, the, the wood themes have uh, show that age too. And what we've done and attempted to do is to hide the building. The building was a large <laughs> box, and this has created it, uh, an image that makes it sort of disappear. And coming up 44 here, you'll see that at first you're not quite sure if the buildings are real or if they're uh, you know, painted on. And so I think it's working quite well. Well, being the artist in charge, it's probably a little bit hard for you to relinquish some control maybe, but I know you've got some other guys helping you out here. How does that process work? It has worked great. These, uh, I've worked with one of these fellows before and, and we just, we get along great. Uh, I, I respect them so much that um, I'm not set in stone about my ideas. We share those ideas. These guys are on such their own level of artistic quality that, uh, you know, they're sought, sought after nationally. Mm. And it's been very easy to meld with them and share ideas and, uh, and let them have some parts of this project and, and feel comfortable that they're going to do what they do as just as I would do it. Wow. So, yeah, it's been great. It's a great team. 
I became an artist when I was born, really. I got in uh, trouble in the first grade for drawing on the school desk, and uh, it started from there, and it's been going on up until now. It's like an evolution. You evolve from uh, drawing to doing, like, small paintings to bigger paintings to stuff this big. You know, it's a natural progression. But a lot of work goes into the preparation that people don't really see. You know what I mean? We kind of make it look easy because we just get up there and paint it in. But there's a lot of behind the scenes work in yeah, the prep stage before we even show up on the job to paint. We're doing a lot of behind the scenes uh, work, making patterns and mixing colors, things of that nature. I'm really blessed to be a part of this team. And, and the villages as well. I think it's an awesome community. And uh, being a hometown Florida boy, I'm all for it. I've known my whole life I, was, I wanted to be an artist and paint pictures. I love it. I love it. Uh, Dennis too. Jimbo. We all, I mean, we're we're all artists. We we, uh, we just love we love what we do, and hopefully it shows on our when we're on our finished product. This is a large project. This is this is. Uh, I don't know if they get larger than this for me, and it's been exciting, challenging, and uh, it's going to be very rewarding to walk away from it done. We want to thank you and the guys for making Brownwood look just fantastic. We can't wait to see the finished product. It's a great team, it's a great camaraderie, and I'm proud to be on board. On the south side of the Barnstorm Theater, you'll see a mural over 100 feet long. We hope you've enjoyed this month's V-Mail. Next month, we'll be back with another exclusive as we continue to follow the progress in the building of Brownwood.